Dallas Cowboys' finest football hours came in 1965. Their second place finish in the Eastern Division represents solid football and the promise of greatness. When the Giants come to call at the Cotton Bowl, they know Bob Hayes only by reputation. Here, they meet him in person. This introduction sets the stage for a Danny Villanueva three-pointer. Don Meredith has the setback, check off in the flat. Don Perkins takes the pass and carries to the Giant Five. The cowboy forward wall overwhelms the Giants and Perry Lee Dunn crashes in. It's the Giants nothing, the Cowboys 10 at the end of the first quarter. Frank Clark's effort pushes the Cowboys cause deep into Giant territory. Rookie Dan Reeves takes advantage of the goalpost and powers for another Dallas touchdown. In the second half, Earl Morrill tries catch-up football. Mike Gector is the Cowboys spoiler. Don Meredith strong arms the Cowboy air offense. Buddy Dial is his partner in this precision pass. Jim Bokey's block springs Don Perkins for 10 yards. Perry Lee Dunn logs the Cowboys' third touchdown at the end of the third period. In the final minutes, Morrill tries to bring the Giants back. But the Cowboys' defense is on the alert, and Jerry Tubbs makes a big steal. Meredith takes command with the aid of Olympian Bob Hayes. Leon Donahue, number 62, and Ralph Neely, number 73, clear the field, and it's full throttle thrust for the goal line. Cowboys hog tie the Giants. The final score, Dallas 31, New York 2. Let's look now at Don Perkins, the pride of the Cowboys, a clever, powerful runner, a back who can do it all. Perkins turns the corner against the Packers. football. Let's show you what we mean. A great individual effort by Frank results in a Cowboy touchdown. From the shotgun, Craig Morton watches. Frank eludes Al Nelson of the Eagles, and it's touchdown Dallas. 
Don Meredith has ample time. And Dan Reeves shows what he's learned in his first National Football League season. Reeves, the rookie from South Carolina, takes this hook pass against the St. Louis Cardinals and with a great individual effort, announces to the world that he bears the stamp of stardom. Don Meredith knows that nifty Pete Gent can take care of business with this reaching catch. Buddy Dial is the Cowboys' man of magnificent moves, nowhere more evident than against the Cardinals' Jim Burson. Another member of Dallas' aerial act is Pennis Norman, who tightropes for a touchdown. Pettis takes an encore against the Browns. The Cotton Bowl is where the action is, and the Cowboys are ready for the Redskins. On the first play from scrimmage, Jim Bokey, number 68, wipes out the skin's flank. And Perry Lee Dunn picks up a first down. Meredith finds Hayes open on a slant, and Bob turns on the afterburner. Meredith rolls right. Then screens left to Don Perkins. Rookie tackle Ralph Neely is his guide, and Neely hunts Redskins like a bereaved relative of Custer. The cunning Cowboys hide Bob Hayes in the line. On this end around, Hayes shows that speed and moves equal six points. Cowboys lead 14 to 7 at halftime. When the Redskins begin to move, Bob Lilly causes Washington to lose vital yardage. The Redskins test the Cowboys left side, but Jerry Tubbs and Chuck Howley prove too strong. George Hewley goes wide, but the Cowboys goal line may as well be a brick wall. Dallas is back in control. Perkins plugs for eight. Meredith sets up in the pocket and hits Buddy Dial, who rides this lightning bolt for 45 yards. J.D. Smith caps the drive as he opens the final period with a touchdown. Sonny Jurgensen tries to rally the Redskins, but Cornell Green's interception wipes out the last threat. The final score, Dallas 27, Washington 7. The Cowboys' defense sparkled again in 65. Their specialty, the goal line stand. Against Pittsburgh, it's second and goal from the one, but Bill Nelson can't punch it across. Nelson tries again with the same results. On fourth down, Mike Lind has a go, but Dallas calls a quick halt. The Cowboy defense worked miracles against Pittsburgh. Even Tom Landry was awed by their efficiency. In all the years I've been in the league, I've never saw a team take a ball away like this. Five straight interceptions every time they had the ball in the quarter.
From the shotgun, Ed Brown is the Steeler quarterback. A vicious tackle by Obert Logan and great ball hawking by Dave Edwards are the elements of this great team effort. three-point try by the Redskins turns into a six-point score by the Cowboys Mike Gector. The Steeler quarterback is roped and branded. The Packers are world champions, but the Cowboys haven't read Bart Starr's press notices. Dallas' powerful rush is the key to their excellent pass defense. When you get a rush like that, it's the same as having an extra set of defensive backs. That's how hard it is for them to complete a pass. Pro Bowl bound George Andre having his best year is circled. Taking care of a blocker, he dumps Earl Morrill. The best defensive tackle in the NFL is worth a team of lesser men. At 26, Bob Lilly is a superstar. No one is better. This little episode against the Giants has a Morrill and it's a Lilly. Cowboys purple cloud surges into the Cardinal backfield and has the drop on Bill Triplett. Sonny Jurgensen has little success against the Cowboy rush. Andre and Howley dislodge the football. The alert Lilly recovers and heads goalward. He picks up a passenger by the name of Charlie Taylor en route and only makes it to the five. Jerry Tubbs, one of the original Cowboys, fills the middle of the Dallas defense. Blitzing Chuck Howley, number 54, operates on the left side. Right linebacker Dave Edwards disrupts a 49er swing pass. San Francisco's Ken Willard storms left. Cornerback Warren Livingston corrals him. Chuck Cowley collects the football and watches tracks. All pro Mel Renfro in his second season is the guided missile behind the Dallas muscle. Marvelous Mel is another cowboy game breaker. Much action like this marks the Dallas secondary. In 1965, the Cowboy defense yielded the lowest percentage of completions in the NFL. Here, Renfro heads off a charging Packer. Mel is also one of the most feared punt and kickoff return specialists in the game. Cowboy blockers break down the 49ers' first assault, giving Renfro room to fly, and fly he does for an even 100 yards and a touchdown. Teamwork is a Cowboy trademark. Big number 77, Jim Colvin, bursts through the skins. His penetration forces a fumble, allowing Cornell Green to record a score.
In the first minutes of the game, a Cowboy touchdown is nullified by a penalty. Undaunted, Dallas presses on. Meredith and Pete Jen combine for good yardage in the second quarter. Danny Villanueva does his stuff, and the Cowboys draw first blood. Moments later, Bob Hayes speeds by defender Dick Lynch. Only Meredith's rifle arm is faster. Hayes takes it in full stride, and 63,000 New Yorkers become believers. Many great track names have sought football fame, but Bob Hayes is a football player who just happens to be the world's fastest living human. The score, the Cowboys 10, the Giants nothing. In the second half, Hayes takes a flat pass and accelerates downfield. In the year of the rookie in the NFL, Hayes' star was one of the brightest. Wants a score, but charging Andre and Yeomans want him more. In the last quarter, the Giants try a crucial field goal, but the Cowboys' specialty team performs their specialty. Green blocks the kick, and Obert Logan does the rest. attacks relentlessly. Scrambling Don Meredith and Buddy Dial combine in sensational style to ice the game. Giant siege guns are spiked again. Ground camera catches J.D. Smith eating up time and yardage. Smith blasts in, and Dallas wins its showdown with New York. The final score, the Cowboys 38, the Giants 20. A place in the sun, Miami's Orange Bowl. The Cowboys reward for winning five of their last seven games. The lovely Apache Bells augment the pageant of the playoff bowl. The Cowboys' improvement in 1965 marks them as a team of the future, but the Baltimore Colts have already arrived. The playoff bowl became the battleground in which the Colts demonstrated their maturity over the young Cowboys. Without the ball, a team cannot score. Cowboy mistakes and the heroic Colts defense, a unit alone that nearly captured a title in the West, combined to stymie the Dallas attack. The thoroughbred Colts from Baltimore showed Dallas the heart of a winning tradition. The success that the Cowboys experienced in 1965 featured the development of fine rookies. For example, Ralph Neely. When he teams with Bob Hayes, they look like old pros, but it takes practice. Coach Landry knows. First time we tried that play, he outran his blockers and got tackled. This time he used the blockers and we get a touchdown. The arrow is on Neely. He releases from the line of scrimmage and cracks back on John Myers of the Eagles. When the play is short of scoring, Neely is disappointed. Big Ralph 
is equally effective blocking inside. He seals Ed Kayat out of this play. Probably the biggest and certainly most pleasant surprise of the year was turned in by free agent Obert Logan. Against the Steelers, Obert makes this play to end the Pittsburgh drive. The isolated camera is on Logan as he intercepts against the Eagles and preserves the Cowboys' slim margin of victory. Little O makes another big play and denies the Browns an important three-pointer. The most obvious cowboy newcomer was Bob Hayes, whose thrilling exploits made him one of the game's top attractions in his rookie year. Meredith finds Hayes open and hits him with a bullet. Controlling his speed, he shows the moves that only the great receivers have. Here, Hayes runs under a 50-yarder from Meredith. His reflexes and fine hands account for this touchdown. But with his speed, he can outdistance any secondary. His phenomenal speed and fine hands have made Bob Hayes a football legend as a rookie. With experience, Hayes may be the factor that tips the championship balance in favor of Dallas in 1966. In the Pro Bowl in Los Angeles, the Dallas defensive stalwarts highlighted the big win for the East. Andre and Lilly penetrate the West protection and drop John Brody. Fran Tarkenden gets the same treatment from Lilly and his friends. Chuck Halley, wearing number 56, pulls off a key interception. Cornell Green and Mel Renfro also had their big moments in the Pro Bowl. In 1965, the Cowboys announced that they have arrived by finishing second in the East. The thrilling action which marked the play of rookies and veterans can only make the Sunday Wars more explosive in 1966. Reserve your tickets now and be where the action is.